Okay, uh... Let's go ahead and start things off. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. This is going to be a game from the Challenger Ranked 5v5's Ladder in North America. And I uh, do hope you guys are uh, here to enjoy some of the highest caliber Challenger League of Legends uh, out there right now. A legendary team that uh, have had some ups and had some downs. Most recently, unfortunately, some of their downs have been an early exit uh, from the uh, press start LAN tournament in uh, Irvine, California. Played there, unfortunately, couldn't quite, uh, couldn't quite lock it down. Uh, ben82081, are you with the uh, Remilia mod that I talked to the other day in chat? I can't quite remember, uh, but either way, hope everything's going good over there. I know that uh, there's like a Reddit thread about, hey, what's going on? I don't know, but um, yeah, I hope everything's okay. Uh, but yeah, Legendary, uh, a team that I put a lot of hype behind and for the longest time was very, uh, okay, I'm pretty sure I talked to somebody like Ben and then Letters, and I was like, wait a or Numbers, and I was like, wait a second, maybe the same person. But uh, yeah, Legendary, one of the teams that uh, was very evenly matched with Frank Fang Gaming for the longest time, but man, FFG have really stepped up their game. They went 1-1 versus Cloud9 Tempest in Rank 5s earlier today, uh, and I didn't catch their third game, but... Now facing off against Legendary, two of the more evenly matched players, or uh, evenly matched players, evenly matched teams uh, in the North American Challenger scene right now. So it's going to be really exciting to see how these work out. Now, uh, Lopali, uh, a guy that, uh, you know, actually placing off against Baby Eater, kind of interesting. Be oh, no, there's a nice rupture, but with Dez coming in from the back, a couple more auto attacks. There's the flash in for first blood. That's going to impactful. Red buff, actually pretty amazing in that situation, so I'm glad that, uh, glad that we get to see the return of the legendary level 2 Gragas ganks. That's how effective they are. We got a, okay, watch out, low pal. You don't, don't want to tank any extra damage there, but, uh, just trying to shove the wave before they, uh, recall back to base. Low pal, you should... Need to go back to base here, but I think he's just going to wait for the recall so they can shove this wave in. And yeah, I don't think he's going to have uh, the Relic Shield. Oh yeah, he actually did have a proc. I couldn't see the rotational thing. I mean, now we got to watch out. We got level 3 versus level 3. No Gnarl for Brandon. Uh, but versus Aurelia, always going to be losing that matchup. Um, there's a power spike uh, around like level 6. Seven, I think is the power spike when you get an extra level in heat 10 style, but uh, already early on you want to use that range versus melee uh, Advantage and Brandon really didn't do that. He walked right up into melee range after the Meganar transform ran out and uh, Yeah, it's uh, that's the struggle Not want to do that. Oh the flash in Brandon just barely too strong and now a couple more auto attacks Ward in the bush and one more. Oh gonna let 14 a oh he gets a uh, Juked by the line of sight, the bounce over the head. One more auto, uh uh, and snowball. No, it's Brandon uh, there to pick up the kill. I don't think Dez can really do anything about that, but man, just the narrowest of kills. And Acadian gonna go down. So let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the team uh, members. Bishu versus Golden Glue. These guys have a very similar champion pool. Um, Cassiopeia maybe one that's maybe favored towards uh, Golden Glue, but uh, uh, Bishu's Cassiopeia. I've seen it come out at uh, press start, and it wasn't necessarily super impactful for Golden Glue though. Uh, the uh, the Azir pick is not something I would have expected. I would have expected you know the the uh, Ziggs or Cassiopeia out of him. Um, but Azir, kind of the same idea, it's persistent magic damage over time. Uh, and uh, I, I guess we'll see how that works out versus Ziggs. Uh, I don't really like Ziggs as a pick right now. I don't think it's necessarily uh, very... Um, very well... Uh, reliable, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Because bouncing bombs, like, they just don't hit anymore. It's like... It's, it's a struggle, man. Um... Too many ways to dodge it, and they're just not uh, not as reliable as things like Sand Soldier damage. It's literally an auto attack, or Cassiopeia. It's Twin Fangs on top of 
Uh, poison. It's, you're getting damaged no matter what. You banned Yasuo so you could pick Nar. <laughs> uh, Akadian a little bit salty about them banning out his champion pool. Saying they didn't even ban the Yasuo intentionally. Uh, I don't know. The Yasuo bans versus Akadian are actually pretty good. Mm. Excuse me. Where was I? So now we can see how this Acadian lane works. Uh, already working the way up to a Phage into Black Cleaver uh, there for Brandon. Seen a wacky amount of Nara builds. Uh, see some Sunfire Capes. Uh, some people still like going for the, uh, the Trinity Force on Nara. I, I don't think Trinity Force Nara is very good. Ooh, Acadian going back with Heat 10 style? I think he could have taken another auto attack and then Blade surged back, but uh, even still, he's pretty low on mana. And mana, of course, the gate for Irelia versus a lot of matchups. Like, theoretically, imagine a world in which uh, Irelia had infinite mana, right? So, that means that you can walk up, Equilibrium Strike, Heat End Style, and then ult over and over and over again. And particularly the Equilibrium Strike, like, that's where the mana goes. Uh, it's 50 mana only uh, at, uh, at rank 1. But you'll actually notice he's maxing Heat End Style instead. I, I actually think the better way to play Irelia now is Equilibrium Strike maxing. John, uh, oh John, are you the uh, are you the uh, the Romilia mod that I talked to in chat uh, yesterday? I I have a feeling you were. I thought it was Ben and then numbers after it, but I think it's actually John and then numbers after it. So I I made a brief mistake earlier, but uh, all right, Acadian and Brandon, uh, Acadian got a nard against the wall. Actually, doesn't hit the wall and does have a lot of health coming back his way, like 20, 25, 30 HP, uh, all the way up to about half health, so that's actually pretty good to, uh, for, for Acadian, dodging out a few of those. John, okay, cool, yeah, um, I saw a Reddit thread this, uh, this morning, uh, and I was like, you know, hey, is everything okay? So I hope everything's good, if you have any inside info, uh, just, uh, just wanted to make sure everything's okay. Um, and yeah, congratulations to Misfits for their, uh, their 3-2 win over Frank Fang Gaming yesterday. Man, that was a rough series, that was, uh, very, I, I want to say good because it just showcased a lot of weaknesses on both teams, and I feel like that's what the the main benefit is coming into NACS is how many of your weaknesses can you fix, not how strong can you make any of your individual players. Back off! That's the great thing uh, about playing Caitlyn, uh, or about playing uh, Sivir into Caitlyn, is that any time Caitlyn throws down a trap, you're just like, what's that? Free mana! And there you go. Um, you just walk over it with Spell Shield. Now that does deplete your Spell Shield cooldown, but it's already back up again. We gotta take a look at the mid lane. Uh, actually, let's get a quick instant replay. So, uh, 14A overextends in the enemy jungle, baits into the Golden Glue, but there's a big flash in from Dezex. Nice Emperor's Divide to slow things out, but look at that explosive cast right onto Golden Glue. That'll force his flash out. Mega Inferno Bomb doesn't kill, but look at Absolute Zero. Does absolutely zero, and this is gonna be a great fight for Legendary. Don't get the slow off the barrel, because it's a little bit short-armed. There's the flash in. Need one more auto attack. Acadian might not go for it. They're going to give the flash auto kill to Bishu. There's uh, probably no kill potential there, but it does push Golden Glue back a little bit further.
Okay, sorry, I just had to check a couple of other things. But we're back. Um, and at least for right now, legendary. Helping things out. I'm not sure about that uh, the leash <laughs> that Dez is uh, talking about. But uh, 14A, he's uh, going to get his, ra uh, his raptor camp on. Doesn't go for the... Uh, uh, the razor sharp uh, buff there, but uh, one thing to talk about for uh, for Nunu is that every time you consume a large creep, that actually gives you the a um, uh, buff. So he's gonna get his spooky snacks. So he ate an animal and gained bonus move speed on kill. Uh, he also has uh, well fed, so uh, he's eaten an elemental and now has his bonus health and size. And it's just like it's really kind of wacky because you get those buffs and you get buffs from spiting the creeps anyway. It's like Consume Smite's really, really strong. Now Acadian versus Brandon. Brandon about to transform into Meganar, which is not when Acadian wants to fight. The bounce back forwards misses the boomerang, so no more slow there, and that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but something else to talk about, action in the bottom lane. Nice monsoon to disengage there. Latman's got health coming back, but uh, double boomerang blades are a good way to get yourself back into it. It's a 2v3 into a 3v3 that Legendary do not want to fight. Sorry, this is the downside to playing Monster Cat music while uh, while streaming because it's just so good that I find myself like zoning out listening to it. I'm like, yeah, that's that's where it's at. And this is a little bit more of a fun stream. It's not like super detailed, hardcore analysis. Mostly just showcasing some of the best players and teams in North America uh, as far as the Challenger series goes. So. Hope you guys can hang out, have fun, enjoy some of the interaction. And if you see any of the uh, cool players in chat that you want to talk to, uh, it's a good place to come, you know, say hi and whatever. And of course, you also get to see the players play on stream. So what, uh, what more could you possibly ask for? Alright, so 14A, he's overextended a bunch this game. Uh, hasn't really gotten punished for it, but okay, well, apologies. We gotta watch this 1v1 again. Uh, and so while I am watching this, I'm also gonna rearrange the champions so that they are in the right place. Uh, nice stun there, and Brandon. Oh no, he didn't respect the sheen. He didn't respect the sheen, and that's what I was talking about, the post-level uh, level 7, level 8 power spike for Acadian. You get the sheen in there, and you just deal too much damage for a melee range engagement. And that's why Brandon is, just, uh, that's what I said earlier, just not respecting the uh, the range. You get up close to personal versus Norelia with a sheen and he 10 style max, you're going to have a bad time. I had 14, of course, forced top lane uh, to hold that, which means that not only does Dez get a free red buff for himself, uh, or or not, uh, I guess he's not going for it. Uh, probably going to look for, at first divide actually used there, uh, golden glue out of mana too, so he's in a little bit of a rough spot. And so overall, this is a very strong point for legendary and a weak spot for... For, uh, for Frank Fang Gaming, because they've got their jungler holding top lane, their top laner back in base, and their mid laner totally out of mana. So, Golden Glue actually gonna look for a steal attempt here, rotating down from top lane. They got their blue buff stolen, and now they're gonna look to hand over another one to Golden Glue. Uh, he's gonna put the Sand Soldiers in there and take it down. Nice steal and a beautiful reaction to being out of position uh, to defend their own blue buff. Okay, so we're taking stock of everything. We got Golden Glue. Uh, blue buff in hand is going to be regenerating that mana. Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe my C key works for some reason. 
so I'm a little bit confused. Like, if I type, then I can hit C's all I want. But apparently, uh, maybe it's that uh, the uh, hotkeys... Yeah, apparently D doesn't work either. So I'm not sure if that just, like, doesn't work anymore, but, uh... Apparently you can no longer open the, uh, the champion window. That's a little bit rough. I forgot to switch Frank Fang Gaming's sides. Uh, didn't I? Oh, that's right. Damn it. Sorry, uh, thanks for the heads up. Dive through onto Brandon. Brandon does get the slow. I feel like he should be going for Frozen Mallet here instead of, um, something like Black Cleaver. Apparently D doesn't work. That, that's, uh, that's right. So I was organizing champions here. And there we go. Alright, we're good. But thanks for the heads up, Maj uh, Mehuja. Mehuja. There we go. Ping's down on the bottom lane. They're pinging out this ward saying, look, there's an enemy ward there. You should probably clear that out. Because here comes the teleport. They knew it coming in. The ping's onto it, but Latman, oh, Latman, exhausted, forced to run away. He is going to get a nice slow field. There's lots of circles out there, but here comes Acadian dashing in. Look at that crit. Massive damage from Acadian off the Trinity Forest completion. He's even going for, what is that, Zephyr next? Oh my gosh. There's a dagger in his inventory. What kind of crazy shenanigans are these? I want to say it's dagger, but you know, it could be any number of crazy things. Magister, wow, rapid long time to stream. What are you up to lately? Uh, casting a lot, and also streaming a lot, just because there are a lot of challenger ranked fives playing, uh, ranked five teams playing, uh, and so hopefully that is something that you guys are going to enjoy watching. Some of the really uh, better games on North American ladder. So hope you guys uh, enjoy the show. Uh, Acadian really, really strong right now. 3-1. That's because they chose to pick a fight up in the top lane. Many fights, in fact, instead of just farming it out. and uh, Something that Brandon FTW definitely could have done, but uh, casting other games, uh, yeah, cast a little bit of Hearthstone uh, there for a little bit, but it's primarily just, um, just League of Legends. So Dragon gonna get smote away. There's 14A taking it down. Low, no Emperor's Divide. I thought Golden Glue is gonna try for the Emperor's Divide in sec play. Mega Inferno Bomb does come out. Look at Acadian. He's gonna get that last second equal or uh, transcendent blade. Gonna pick up another one, giving that one too impactful. And holy hell, Acadian's engages now are just ridiculous. He went for Berserker Greaves. Oh my gosh, Acadian. That's like that's the old school wicked. That we were saying, uh, AC103010, what's up, thanks for watching. Um, back when Ionic Spark was an item, it was the best item in the game for Aurelia, hands down. You try to argue that, I'll fight you. Ionic Spark, Berserker Greaves was the Aurelia build. It destroyed absolutely everything, like, no questions asked. Like, you built those two items on Aurelia and you just walked through the enemy team. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous, but... Hey, Kamori, what's up? Um, but, uh, unfortunately, Ionic, Ionic Spark, uh, no longer a really great item for Aurelia. Kading waiting for Brandon to come back. Don't do it, Brandon. Don't do it. Oh, no, Brandon. 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 Equilibrium Strike. And there's Otto. Otto. Ward over the wall for the Blade Surge. Akkadian, you're so good at this game. Oh, my gosh. He missed two uh, uh, Transcendent Blades, or else he might have killed Brandon. But, jeez. He warded for the Blade Surge. What a sick play. Damn. All right, Acadian. We get it. You're good. Um, and very good. 4-1-2 and two this game. Best score uh, on the uh, best score on the map. There's the uh, Twitter link for the, uh, the games that I'll be casting today. Uh, 14A... 
Really lackluster performance. Colgate, he's been overextending an enemy jungle, which got him killed once. Uh, he has been farming and has secured his team two dragons. So, uh, you know, congratulations, man. Great. You, you're getting the objective focus gameplay. But while you're doing that, you're not helping out your top laner that's super far behind. You're not snowballing any of your lanes, all of which you're losing. It's 8 to 1, and there's only so much of a deficit that two dragons can make up for. Like, at some point, you're going to have to think to yourself, well, uh... Time to, uh, time to try something a little new. There we go. Mahuja, I said two of the best teams. Misfits is one of the best teams as well, but so are these guys. And I would say, honestly, Frank Fang Gaming definitely up in the up uh, in the uh, upper echelons uh, after some of their big performances. They went they went two three versus Misfits. I don't know of any of the teams uh, in North American Challenger Series uh, that that can do that other than things maybe like. Turing would be a good matchup versus Misfits, but Coast as well. Coast have been destroying everyone, so uh, with the exception of Turing. So it's like, it's like Turing beats Coast, Coast beats Misfits, and Misfits beats Turing. Uh, it's kind of like the the cycle of way. Oh no, needed one more auto attack. Acadian couldn't quite find it there. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, and. Uh... Will now be uh, actually unceremoniously dead. Tanks a turret shot just for free. Gets Nard into the wall. There's the knock backwards, but you didn't have Mercury treads. Did have uh, the uh, Ionian fervor to uh, to get away with that tenacity, but I uh, didn't unfortunately pay off. Dez uh, is just gonna get out with a body slam over the wall, uh, and he's actually in a little bit of a rough spot here, though. Uh, there's three sand soldiers for damage, and basically the entire enemy team. Right on top of you, a 3 for 0 exchange, really putting Frank Fang Gaming back on the map and right into a Baron of their own. And now only Alistar in the lineup. Uh, Magister, who is Turing? Turing is the pharmaceutical company uh, that sponsors uh, this League of Legends team. Uh, Baron gonna go down very, very low. There's the heals and the monsoon, just to make sure there's no steals. Uh, and it'll be a uh, the first Baron buff of the game. No impactful! Oh, he does get slowed out there. By the Ice Blast, into Sand Soldier damage, and no knockup from that Tempest, but it's, uh... I, I always forget the name of that, Howling Gale. What's Coast roster at the moment? Uh, don't mash me, Gate, Chris. Um, Conquan maybe is their, uh, their support. They've been using a couple of different supports lately. And, uh, Welcome to Heaven as the Jungler. They go by the name, uh, the name, uh, uh, South Shore? South Shore, I think, is, uh, uh, the name of their team. All right, so back to the matter at hand. Uh, Dez, uh, this is continually the struggle for him. Both junglers really just overextending a ton. However, for 14A, at least he has the confidence is like, hey, I may be dying a lot when I go into the enemy jungle or just dying when I go into the enemy jungle. I may not be ganking my lanes, but I got those objectives. And that's exactly what you're starting to see here. Brandon finally finding these kills uh, that he's been missing all game long. Now he's 4-3 after going 1-3 in the lane phase. But yeah, 14A, once again, he's the one tanking up the turret, dies to the turret there at the end. Uh, but it does go down, so a turret to turret. Two now, two to three. Uh... Oh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 you're, you're, no, 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 we gotta watch this again, gonna get a quick backspace, we're gonna slow this down, watch this disengage in slow motion on the hunt, trying to get a KD as far forward as he can, frozen heart completed, so he's got a lot of tankiness when he goes into this, but watch this, the engage onto Lapman, Lapman immediately flashing away, but watch this Emperor's Divide, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, Akkadian, uh, uh, you can't get through here, bounces him a couple times, uh, and of course the bounce house continues with a, 
Howling Gale right on top of him. Beautiful way to stop the assassination, and that's four kills off the board. The champion there as well. So now we're going to watch it continue up the mid lane. Bishu gets a shutdown, actually, on Golden Glue. And as long as he can dodge the rock, and he does. Oh my gosh. He's a little too short for that. The rock didn't hit him. <laughs> my god. Flick JX12. Rumors that it could be called Odyssey Gaming. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, where did you hear that, though? Because I would definitely love some sauce with that. Richie is intense. Uh, thanks, John. Like a weaker fusion? You know, you say that, but they're actually doing really well. And, you know, maybe Chunky's a, a little not quite on par with the rest of the team, but he's actually been doing pretty okay for the last few games. I've gotten a chance to watch them. Uh, we're going to speed things up as they disengage here. Latman coming in. He's got a lot of move speed off these auto attacks. Uh, Ace in the hole not even completed the channel. <laughs> and low pally. Probably pretty dead here, too. Look at those crits from Justin Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer. I say Justin Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer, but that's still like 50 uh, 55% crit there. Hmm, thinking to myself about a couple of things. Oh, but yeah, enjoy the uh, the, the discussion in chat. Uh, it's it's a little bit up in the air as far as where a lot of players are going. Uh, Nienton, so uh, a big uh, big question mark there, but uh, we're starting to see some some interesting things happen. And uh... hmm. Trying to figure out what's uh, what's happening here. All right, so uh, looks like back at the matter at hand. And yeah, thanks for the uh, the link, uh, Flick JX12. I'm not sure how you found out that, but. Reddit detectives on the case. Uh, back to the matter at hand. Baby Eater coming in as a support. Uh, something to talk about. Uh, in case you don't remember, Baby Eater was the substitute support for CounterLogic Gaming when they sent their team to Korea a week early to train. Uh, I got some LCS experience there. But, uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, unfortunately not a... Uh, not necessarily a, a change that's been uh, that's been vetted too much since then. Uh, I would say that at least for the time being, uh, uh, Baby Eater has been doing very well uh, at, in the support role uh, for Frank Fang Gaming and has really improved their duo lane with Latman, who's already been a uh, a huge uh, a huge I want to say like LCS potential talent but it hasn't really come up in LCS discussions yet uh, so it's exciting to see uh, dual lane very uh, strong point of uh, well point of strength for lack of a better word uh, there for Frank Fang gaming but for legendary you got to look towards the top lane and that's what's so exciting about this series it's that it's just top lane top lane top lane and I love the top lane impact uh, that both of these players are having right now Acadian uh, smashed this matchup early and that has made some questionable decisions whereas Brandon has uh, got crushed in lane and now is actually crushing outside of lane probably looking for a frozen mallet into black cleaver for some aggressive items coming up and speaking of aggressive items, Acadian finished his Frozen Heart and is done with the defense tree. Either looking for a Last Whisper or possibly a Zephyr uh, coming up next. I'd expect Last Whisper. Uh, I've seen Wicked go this build a bunch of times. Uh, Mahuja, hey Rapid, is Man Cloud's team any good? Yes. Um, isn't Baby Zeus a top laner? No, he's support. Pl uh, okay, well, Baby Zeus plays whatever, but I'm pretty sure he's at support right now.
going to switch to C19 versus AKA. Uh, yeah, probably. We'll see how long it is. Uh, but I actually really want to catch this game uh, all the way towards the end. Uh, it's 30 minutes in and 10 to 12 uh in uh, in kills so you might think well the big numbers are the story nope you gotta take a look at the uh, the other ones uh three to zero in dragons smaller numbers but bigger impact overall and you can really tell the impact of that extra move speed uh no sivir on the team but everybody moving around a little bit more quickly and baron buff uh is the big deal right now now bottom side of the map i almost was afraid that acadian didn't have teleport up but he can clear these waves ridiculously quickly keep the push going on and now mid lane Question mark in front of... Whoa, that man half health off of one bomb. That is not a good fight to fight. But, uh, oh, low pally forced to ult. So he's going to be safe and sound. Can they get to the back line? Though, Lat Lat man and Baby Eater kiting so, so well. Need to see an Emperor's Divide out here to divide the fight. But it's actually looking pretty good. Acadian dead off the teleport immediately. And Brandon actually still alive. Low pally no ult anymore. But Brandon might be able to chase him down. Impactful, though. Incredibly strong. Red buff in hand. And even though Lat man didn't die, he's forced completely out of the fight. Brandon and 14A in the exact same situation. Low HP and no uh, ability to defend this mid lane turret. And we're good. Sorry, I just had to take care of a uh, couple of things. Yeah, uh, I don't know what uh, what Gragas' deal was there. Somewhat questionable uh, with the uh, the flash engage. So now that Legendary kind of threw away any semblance of a lead that they had, dead back to dead even in um, in kills, or not in kills, in gold, uh, 50k apiece, and we're only 30 minutes into the game, so uh, we got to talk about how uh, how the game's like progressing overall. Uh, so where's the gold? Uh, and you can check that by hitting the X button. Uh, you can see a, almost 12,000 gold apiece for both of the carries. Same situation for top lane here. But over across the pond, not nearly as much uh, there for Brandon, but still comparable gold between the carries means that it's actually super, super even. And Mahuta, thanks for the link to tracking the, uh, the pros. That's actually a super good resource if you guys are looking to watch a lot of Challenger uh, League of Legends. a couple of second arenas. All right, and back to the matter at hand. Bishu, uh, Mega Inferno Bomb completely whiffs, and now he's just going to get soloed by Brandon. And uh, yeah, even though Impactful is there, Brandon, uh, okay, well, I'm not sure where Brandon was going, but Impactful will get a 500 gold shutdown. Wow, uh, a little bit questionable, and uh, at the end of everything, it's still going to be a dragon uh, for Frank Fang Gaming. They get their fourth dragon of the game, and they're going to win the fight. Three uh, for one exchange. Is Legendary under an organization? No, they are not, but would be a great pickup for an organization. I uh, can't really complain about that. But yeah, BSU, that fight, completely um, non-impact. Missed his ult, got completely soloed. Uh, didn't really do a whole lot of anything, whereas Golden Glue on Azir... He really loves playing these uh, these sustained magic damage uh, champions, and I really think they're they're paying off in a big way. So I'm excited to see maybe more of those come out. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes they don't necessarily work quite as well uh, as you'd expect. But um, like I said, there's only so many bad things you can say about uh, his uh, his champions, and in fact, quite a few m more uh, better ones, if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, then just you know. Belay that order, but you get the idea. Mm -mm -mm. Give me one second. Still trying to figure a couple of things out.
And apologies, uh, directed camera was kind of uh, wrecking out of me. Legendary's org is Legendary Inc. Uh, I, I don't think so, Mimo. I'm pretty sure that company makes uh, makes movies. Apparently, my D key is now. Oh, sheebs. Uh, let me fix my D key here. This is a terrible time to fix my uh, keys. Camera control. Yeah, directed camera needs to be D now. So my D key does work. It's the C champion key that doesn't work. But uh, I. All right, so we gotta watch out around the Baron area. It's still under uh, under attack. If I have health, and I mean, Dez is on it. He's gonna be forced to disengage with Brandon here. I don't think they can continue to do Baron with Brandon's damage there. Uh, Impactful's got a lot to put back out onto him, but here's Bishu, and with Bishu, they will have enough damage to finish off this Baron. And that'll be Baron buff for Legendary. And now Brandon, oh, Brandon, he's gonna transform into Mega Nar. We'll get a nice Nar backwards. I, I didn't even know that was possible, the Nar flash like that, but he, he got it off. Unfortunately, it uh, wasn't enough in the flash out, but wow. Wow. Alright, we're good. small community forum that's actually pretty cool do they have a twitter memo uh because i've been looking for a legendary twitter for a long time uh but i've not seen it and so now we get to watch golden glue okay not get uh bounced there by dez And Latman in this game is actually really impressing me. Uh, even though he's only 2-2 and uh, and 8 as Caitlyn, he's faced up a lot of uh, very difficult positional decisions and has actually come out on top in a lot of them. However, he's a little bit on... My Twitter is legendary. <laughs> nice. Same, actually. Uh, the top lane, oh, for a melee choke. And, whoa, no, Golden Glue. Golden Glue's disconnected. It's a terrible time to disconnect. Uh, Brandon versus Acadian 2 is not going to be a matchup he wants to go. Uh, Brandon does have really, really good itemization here, but uh, Acadian doesn't even want to fight him. He's got Baron buff as well. And without Golden Glue, no, they're not going to be able to fight this. They're going to lose their entire base. Even Latman going to die before he can get back to his turret. Impactful slingshotting the team underneath the enemy turret. And oh, no. Oh, my gosh. That's heartbreaking. Golden Glue carrying the entire game uh, but unfortunately disconnects at the very end and there's GG's at right after he reconnects uh, says the GG's in legendary <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on with this connection but wow what a uh, what a game legendary will finally take it out uh, I mean they could maybe defend but they've lost I think a little bit too much already uh, and yeah there you go taking out the turrets and Inhibitor coming down, or uh, Nexus coming down uh, at the same time. Legendary, take a 15 to 16 victory. They actually win being down in kills, down in turrets, and down. Oh, I guess they were up in gold. That's actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting.